Bruce has given me 10 minutes uh, to speed through a huge number of slides that I'm going to do, uh, and we're going to try and do history of IMT and where it's going. Well, to begin with, IMT began with a program called and do. Thinking Worlds. Thinking Worlds was a single-player educational game, prize-winning game from uh, Great Britain, with 25 self-marking units with various academic topics. This was found to be very, very popular with um, parents and with children, and so um, had us move forward and look for something better, and that something better was Quest Atlantis. Quest Atlantis was developed by educators at the University of Indiana. Uh, it leveraged successful strategies that have been learned by the gaming industry and married it to 21st century pedagogies for 21st century learners. This multiplayer educational questing program engendered more reading and writing by students than most parents ever imagined possible and became a transformational force amongst our students. This year, our IMT7 students, for instance, scored a full 16% higher than the general average for literacy on the FSA exams. The uh, relatively few gaps that uh, existed between Thinking Worlds and QA were filled by brain pop. And of course, the kids love that. But then something very profound happened. We began to get our own 3D virtual worlds. Uh, the first of them being an object path that was provided to us by Scott Miller the architect of the builds in Quest Atlantis. Fortunately for us, Scott Miller has agreed to join with us and been a vital member of the IMT team for the past few years. The first build that we did was Viamoose. And in Viamoose, uh, it's, it stands for Virtual Antiquities Museum, but it's also Latin for to walk about. And of course, that's the idea, is discovery, learning, and exploration. In this world, the students, well, they didn't build Rome in a day, but it probably took about a week's worth of work um, between them. Build Rome, where it became a repository, not only for experiences such as exploring, exploring the Colosseum, the Roman Senate, the baths, the palace. Uh, well, you can go to Rome and walk down Roman streets and interact with the characters there. But it also became a place for assignments as well. And so you can see if you if you click on these uh, on the gladiator that's there and the content quiz and the info project, which is um, for critical questions, um, it's really become a wonderful place for embedding curriculum. And as a grade seven teacher, I always got these sugar cube pyramids. I don't get those anymore. Instead, I get pyramids and stabas that can be explored. But something that's even better, the students began doing what we were doing. And that is like over here is King Tut's tomb. And the students have begun building their projects, but building learning into it as well. So when other students come and explore it, they're actually learning, um, taking tests and quizzes and that kind of thing as well. With our students doubling each year over the last four years, IMT teachers now have classes of students that enable us to start exploiting worlds such as French world, where all the curriculum all the materials necessary to scaffold and support immersive experiential oral language skills can be given in the classroom and then of course it doesn't stop there they go out into the world and here are a number of different places that have been created there's virtually nothing that you can't do no interactions that you can't have from swimming with sharks to skiing down mountains karaoke places and students saw what could be done with builds, they wanted to practice building too. And so again, we've got Medieval World, where Brian Titley, our, one of our art teachers, has been uh, working with Scott Miller and, and Scott Miller with him, teaching the kids how to build. And this is the place where they come. And the kids within five lessons are doing things that are really quite incredible. This, for instance, is a Eastern European uh, village where uh, not only are the kids building this in collaboration with each other, but they're building a scenario where villagers have to decide whether or not they should overthrow the government. But if they do, then the church loses a lot of the assets that it uses to help the poor. So students are faced with these kinds of um, geopolitical struggles, critical thinking kind of um, scenarios that the students don't just experience, they're actually building them as well. Having gotten a chance to do some skills, uh, they then can go to Logos World where they're given plots where they can just build what they want to build. And the kids just love this. 
but of course they can take their skills into project-based learning as well. And so this is Canada World, and you can see on the right-hand side uh, that uh, you know a number of our students who have built really incredible builds, and this is just a fraction of the builds as you travel across Canada that you can see. You can hop on that train there, and it will leave from Toronto and go across um, the prairies and stop at uh, various stations, and those stations are museums that house the information for those regions. So it's just incredible what they're building, and uh, it's uh, you know the beauty of it is is that when they do their projects, we don't throw them away. We honor those projects, and there's also StoryForge where they learn about all the different genres of storytelling, including parables and proverbs, Aesop fables, for instance, and uh, they get to tell their story. So if we've got a class, the kids can sit around the campfire and uh, stand on the speaker's rock and uh, and tell their story to the other kids. And this, of course, is just so much more experiential than what they would generally expect. The kids got so good at this that we decided to uh, um, start a, a world called Heritage World. And in this Heritage World, it's like a 3D Wikipedia. So I don't, you don't see it in the background, but there's an emporium for di the digestive system, which I think is fascinating. How many people would um, think that that would be a fun subject to study, but uh, they make it fun in here. And one of the builds, for instance, is a 13-year-old boy made this build. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but this build here contains all the information that uh, someone like me could use to build a house. And I, I kid you not, when I explore this build that this child did, I could go step by step and build a house. He's got all the steps that are uh, all laid out in this contractor's office. Muskamig was originally a build by first two First Nations brothers who uh, used it to save a, a virtual restoration of their ancestral language, culture, art, history, etc. But we've uh, saved that and replaced it with a world where students and staff can meet. And of course, that's, you're in Muskamig right now. Each of the classrooms that teachers have can be um, added to in any way that you want. Uh, so I've created a museum with artifacts of the history that we've been studying. But in addition to classrooms, there are boardrooms that staff can meet in uh, and our students. Uh, there are uh, offices uh, such as here is Greg's office, for instance, uh, complete with uh, golfing, uh, complete with uh, a, a table where you can read the Bible or listen to CBC radio. And of course, this is a much more relaxing place to meet. And it's interesting, you know, they're treating uh, burn victims in, in the American military with virtual worlds that are cold because it reduces the heat that they experience and the pain from the burns. So um, that might have been a good idea for the Kelowna crew to be meeting in a, an, an igloo. There's also an exposition area where students can display their work digitally. So instead of a history fair where they're using cardboard and paper and scissors and crayons, uh, they can do all their digital work, their 21st century work, and display it here instead. And in fact, we're looking at starting on our Vimy Ridge exposition, where students would actually be able to participate in the, the taking of Vimy Ridge. And of course, there's grad rooms for our ceremonies, and we just had a grad with over 70 students that participated in that. And afterwards, they went for their party, um, and they danced to Christian music. And it's amazing how many of them really appreciated that it was Christian music. Now, I have no time to really to talk about the other worlds that are available to us, such as Titanic World, where there's a complete museum there. Uh, and of course, you can uh, tour right through the Titanic, going down to the pools and the dining areas and all the rest of that stuff. There's just dozens and dozens of other worlds like that available to us to use. We, we're not even going to have the time to even scratch the surface on Trek World, where we're actually building an, our own interactive questing program that's similar to Quest Atlantis. After this is over, you will be able to go with Scott and experience that if you want to try that. Uh, we have no time to talk about Dimension U either, uh, other than it's a Unity program now that is uh, uh, doing some really uh, great stuff with some of our students. Speaking of Unity, uh, that is the next step where we're going to. This is, for instance, a Viking village. And each one of those uh, huts, there are not 2D. Those are 3D. 
So you can go into those places and actually experience the whole uh, Viking village and build it out. Uh, a place like this, this medieval village, imagine each one of those buildings uh, is actually could become a classroom. And we can put 50, 60, 100 students in each one of those classrooms. And actually what happens is that that makes this a virtual campus where we could have literally hundreds of students in one build, uh, each of the classrooms having their own voice. And by the way, much, much simpler than what you went through uh, to get in here and to use. This picture here is just unreal. You can actually walk over to the picture and step into it. And when you step into it, you find yourself on the Enterprise where the warp drives are kept and you have the opportunity to speak with Scotty and say things like, beam me up, Scotty. So what is IMT? Well, as you can see, it's, it's big and it's growing all the time. You know, these are some of the Unity builds, for instance, that we're going through. But um, IMT is an engaging, motivational, highly interactive learning community. It's a village of sorts that provides both asynchronous and synchronous learning. It's a place where we interact in the program a lot with parents because they become the filters for what the students hand in. And those parents are often grateful for the education they receive in this process as well. I've heard that many times. It's a combination of this intensely responsive education that led one of the parents to share with me uh, just uh, this last month. Uh, her son turned to her and said, well, no wonder they haven't been accepting my IMT submissions. I've been turning in crap. Uh, his words, not mine. But uh, she was just amazed uh, that he finally had come to this realization that his work was substandard and that he needed to improve it because it wasn't good. So we're interacting with students probably two hours a week on average, and it can be considerably more. Uh, some of that is spent uh, interacting with them in, in class time as well, in, in addition to that. Uh, we spend each week evaluating and re-evaluating student submissions, meeting with them individually as well. Uh, students have weekly classes that must be prepped for, conducted, taped, and edited to be available. So the students who are away or absent for whatever reason, or perhaps just needing to review the lesson, can go back and review it. The materials reside both uh, inside the world itself and on Moodle as well. Now, while not every student has the work ethic or the technology or the technical and or academic skills required most of the students and they say I want to do this and you know the thing that I found is students who want to do something very very most often can do it and so that's the message that I'm giving to you and um, I know that Bruce is going to pray to close off the meeting but at the back of the room there are some portals that go out to a teleport center and I would invite you to go around and take a look at those um, teleport centers and pick one and just before you leave today explore at least one world and there'll be some IMT people uh, will be trying to cover some of those worlds for you. The other thing is, is that when you come into Muscomeg uh, and you come into the teleport center that led you in here at the back is a screen and on the screen is a presentation of the new Quest Atlantis. Thank you so, so much for your time and for being here. Thank you, Gord. And uh, for those of you who want to have a little guided tour afterwards, you can stick around and, and uh, find either Gord or Scott, and they would be happy to, to show you around, give you a uh, some of the you can visit some of the places that the worlds that the students have made and that kind of thing and and get a little bit more of that taste and uh, so just as I close up thank you for uh, again for taking the time to put this together and and uh, and work to meet here I really appreciate that we we really appreciate that 